Hi guys, welcome back to Wilder Beard Reviews and welcome back to What's on Your Pull List, the weekly show where we talk about our favorite day of the week, New Comic Day, the day where we all go to our comic shops, hopefully pick up a fat new stack of comics. I know my stack this week is plenty fat, just like last week, and then we all have a good stack of stuff to read. This week especially is great because this week is a holiday week, so real quick, just a note on that. This is Thanksgiving week. If you're from the States, this is the week we celebrate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, that's on Thursday, um, Wednesday. I will be traveling. Um, however, uh, I can set my own schedule on Wednesday, so I'm going to try to leave after I get a chance to go pick up my new comics this week, and then I'll be driving about four hours away. Um, so, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take my um, my handy dandy phone tripod here that I need to put the the phone clip back on, so I can attempt to make some videos while uh, I am where I'm going for uh, for the the back half of this week. Um, I'm going to try. There's going to be a lot of family there and I don't want to prioritize this as fun as it is and as much as I enjoy it over family. I don't get to see that often. So we'll see how the week shakes out. I'm going to take everything I need to do it with me. Um, we'll see how the week goes and how everything goes. And then I'll be back in town late Friday. Um, so then over the weekend, I can start uh, pr uh, producing videos and stuff like that for you guys. So just know that that's kind of in flux. And I might put something on the community tab on Wednesday. Just uh, see how the week goes. All right. So so this week, like I said, another fat week. I've got eight comics on my list. Fallen Angels, New Mutants, X-Force, all issue number twos, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 45, Batgirl 41, Batman Beyond 38, Detective Comics 1016, and Red Hood Outlaw 40. Just a, another eight comic week. R.I.P. my wallet this week. But... Before we get into my stuff, let's talk about what you guys picked up last week. As we always do here on the channel, love to run through y'all's comments from last week. We're going to kick it off with John Thomas, Batman 83 for that gorgeous Michael Hannon cover, and two more issues until the Tom King run is over, and Ice Cream Man number 16 for me this week. So, Batman 83, that one really turned a corner for me. I liked that one a lot better than the previous issue of, of, of Batman. Man, um, actually, I think I loved Batman issue 43. I know I I was very cautious about my love for it in uh, in the review that I did for, but I think I I really really enjoyed that book. Uh, Ultimate Victory 88 says Batman 83. Bane broke Batman's back. City of Bane storyline broke my heart in a bad way. Yeah, it's had some it's had some rough issues. Justice League 36. Even though this series is coming to an end, Snyder teased that this story will continue in a new way with the next chapter being teamed up with Greg Capullo, Capullo and Snyder is just a match made in heaven. Absolutely love it. Ba Absolute Carnage 5, Batman Superman 4 series is the definition of standard. Woohoo! Uh, uh, Flash Forward 3, this story is surprisingly really good. Batman White Knight presents Von Freeze, a side story to the White Knight universe. Intrigued? I need to pick up that the first series of Batman White Knights. I still have yet to do that. Something is Killing the Children 3. Oh, damn, this story is amazing. Yes, issue 3 was great as well. You are obsolete and misplaced. Number one, love, death, parallel universes, heaven, hell, two souls trying to reunite out in the afterlife. A big, oh yes, that sounds pretty good. Um, all right, so then we got Eddie White says, this week for me is Excalibur 2, Marauders 2, King Thor 3, Bloodshot 3, and Rai 1. It should be entertaining. Speaking of Bloodshot, did you guys see the trailer for the Bloodshot movie with Vin Diesel? Um, I didn't know anything about the character. Um, just I knew he was a Valiant Comics character and seeing him around in comics comic shops and stuff, but the movie looks good? Movie looks interesting. Movie looks interesting. It looks interesting enough to get me to probably go see it in the theater. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how the reviews come. If it's like like just bargain basement kind of movie, then maybe I'll wait till it hits Redbox or something. All right, we got Jason Barnes. My pull list, which was difficult. Batman Superman 4, so good. Marauders 2, Batman 83, Justice League 36, and Supergirl. Uh, this is crazy. Um, Fantastic 4, 2099. I haven't checked out any of the new 2099 books. I don't actually. I'm not sure if I've ever read 
any of the 2099 books. Uh, being the big X-Men fan that I am, that's one of the series that I do want to collect, even though I'm sure it's just a pile of garbage that's not worth the paper it's it's printed on. I'm an X-Men fan, so I gotta I gotta do the the completest thing and and pick that up. So I uh, like you guys. Let me know how the new 2099 stuff is. Um, Luna Moody says, Hey, Will DeBeard, this week's list is Batman 83, Justice League 36, Marauders 2, Nightwing 66, and Batman Superman 4, The Infected. Um, Nightwing 66, that was a really, really good issue. Especially combined with the Nightwing Annual number 2 that came out a few weeks ago. That series has really, really turned a corner. If you guys have jumped off of, of Nightwing, I think it might be time to jump back on. I think Luna, you were actually the one that told me it was it was a good time to jump back on. And it was. This was uh, 60 issue 63, so a few issues ago. It was a good place to jump back on. Alright, uh, Comic Kid 17 I know you're a Nightwing fan too. Um, great moment, a moment of silence, or great video, a moment of silence for your wallet this week moment of silence again this week uh, i got her pull i've got a, a bigger pull list this week two flash forward three justice league 36 infected scarab number one nightwing at 66 2099 alpha number one fantastic four 2099 number one also far sector was good most world building in the first issue but i liked it and just so you know it's only a 12 issue mini series could just wait for the trade to eventually come out that sound that definitely sounds like a plan um i was interested in that and hearing that it's a 12 issue mini um which i should have already known uh but thank you for calling that out uh, uh common kids 17 uh that definitely sounds like one that i can pick up i read i read mr miracle that way um i loved mr miracle i know tom king gets a lot of shit for his batman but his his mr miracle mini series was uh, amazing i remember buying the first issue of that like a third print and then i never finished reading it and I never bought any more issues and then i found the 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 trade paperback for like Half, at, at half price books, so I found it half cover, and I was like, yeah, I'll give that a read. Amazing. Absolutely loved it. Gerald Lang, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 34, Amazing Mary Jane 2, Captain Marvel 12, King Thor 3, 2099 Alpha 1, Fantastic Four 2099. A lot of Fantastic Four 2099s on the list the, from last week, and both X books. Mary Jane is a fun read, and King Thor and Amazing Spider-Man have been solid. Good to hear, man. Good to hear. All right, I love signed comics. This week I'm grabbing Absolute Carnage 5, Batman 4, Acetate Cover. Those Acetate Covers have been fire. I love those so much. I'm curious about how they're going to hold up um over time though that's going to be very interesting maybe, maybe in like 10 years see if they still are are holding up as well as they were coming off the rack uh conan the barbarian 11 uh immortal hulk 27 supergirl 36 acetate cover and captain marvel 12 final issue if the ac run which i've enjoyed uh are the i guess the absolute carnage run yeah uh batman superman has been pretty good and worth continuing Conan battles Crom by Crom. Enough said. Supergirl is partly a cover by, but partly because it looks so wicked. Uh, so I'm curious. Don't usually get Captain Marvel, but I do like seeing the dark side of a character, and I think the character design for her is. Um, I think there's supposed to be more to that comment, but I do like that uh, Captain Marvel uh, kind of evil mirror universe, uh, dark Captain Marvel character design. Son of Porkins, uh, Excalibur 2, Marauders 2, Something is Killing the Children 3, Count Crowley Reluctant, Midnight Monster Hunter 2, that's a hell of a title name, <laughs> Vampirella 5, and I'm going to check out Glow vs. The Babyface from IDW. Uh, IDW. Liked the first miniseries and they, they they did a few months ago enough, so definitely gonna give this a try as well. Most hyped for Marauders, such a fun book. Marauders 2 was really good. And that glow, I assume that is glow spitting out of the Netflix TV show about the gorgeous or glamorous ladies of wrestling, which is a really great show, although I have yet uh, to circle back around and watch season three. It's on my list, but I just haven't gotten there yet. Um, all right, guys, that is everything that you guys had on your poll list last week. Thank you guys so much for all of your comments. Before we dive into my comments, I want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters, Russell W., Michael, JG, John T., Frank G., Keith, 
Beast D, a new uh, new Patreon. Thank you so much for signing up, man. Uh, Donovan G, David W, Michael B, Robert L, and Duggan. Thank you guys so much. You guys really help out the channel, especially with big weeks um, like the last two weeks have been. It means a lot to me that you uh, take some time out to sign up to be a patron and support the channel financially. And if, you, if, if any of you guys out there are interested in that, um, let me know. Or I'm sorry, don't let me know. The, the, the link for that is in the top of the description. All right, let's dive into my comics that I'm getting this week, kicking it off with Fallen Angels number two. Let's read the description here. The dawn does not break for all. Psylocke finds herself in this new world of mu. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I meant to. That's the same. That's the same um, summary from last week. I copied and pasted it in. I realized it, and why? As I started reading it, I think that's the same from last week. Um, so real quick, Fallen Angels. It was at the bottom of my uh, excitement list for the the new Dawn of X titles. And I think it was at the bottom of a lot of people's lists. And I can't remember how many comments I got last week or when that first issue dropped with people saying, I didn't, I didn't, almost didn't pick this up and now it's my favorite. I think that might have been for, for me too. I don't know if it was my favorite, but it definitely surprised the hell out of me how good it was. So if you slept on... Fallen Angels issue number one, you definitely need to um, go back, check that out. Hopefully issue two is just as good as issue one was. So there are um, a little, there's some confusing things about it because it delves heavily into the relationship between Quanon and Betsy Braddock and the Psylocke personality and how there was body sharing and body swapping and mind tricks and stuff like that it's very confusing i actually I, I want to do a video going back and pulling out some of the back issues that are over there um to try and make a video about that to go through it um i kind of want to get straight in my head before i do that but i think that's something i want to bring to the channel over the next couple weeks because it is um a top of mind right so um aside from that we got information that psylocke uh, quanon has a child that she didn't know about and then there's a new villain called apoth uh, which i had, had some fun uh, doing the etymology, or um, I don't know what the study of words is. I forgot. I should have looked that up. Um, but it's uh, a Greek word, I think, that means to ascend to godhood, which is what the new villain for this series has done, or kind of doing. But it also is the prefix to apothecary, which means a pharmacist or someone who makes drugs, and they made a new um, like techno-organic drug type of thing that's just wreaking havoc. So, lots of really, really cool stuff going on at Fallen Angels. Um, issue 1 blew me away, blew a lot of people away. So if you didn't check it out, go pick it up. Um, it's well worth the 4 or 5 bucks that the first issue was. Hopefully issue 2 can follow that up. Alright, next up we got New Mutants number 2. So issue 1 was a little bit goofier than I expected. Um, so basically we've got the, the New Mutants crew that you can see on the cover there uh, wanting to go out to Shi'ar territory to uh, pick up Cannonball and take him one of the Krakoan flowers so he can build a Krakoan gate and then they can all uh, get back home. Um, they hitch a ride with the Star Jammers who were a little bit dicks to, to them. They weren't the most gracious of hosts, although on the flip side, the New Mutants weren't the best guests, so you can kind of see where that's coming from. So if they get to this Shi'ar outpost and the Star Jammers do what Star Jammers do, they're space pirates, so they go and steal something. They leave the new mutants behind and they get captured by the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. So it wasn't my favorite of of the new uh, Dawn of X titles. It actually was probably in the bottom half, maybe bottom two. I think Excalibur is still my weakest one of, of the new Dawn of X titles. But I enjoyed issue one, so I'm going to keep reading this one if not for nothing else than to bring you guys reviews. Um, that cover looks pretty fun, and then you've got Gladiator in silhouette there. So we'll see what issue two is. Sometimes you have to get a couple issues into a series to figure out what's going on, right? All right, so that brings us to X-Force number two. To probably my second favorite. I would say X Force and uh, Fallen Angels are two are my top two of the new Dawn of X titles. With the middle two being X Men and um, oh and Marauders, X Men and Marauders, and then the bottom two being um, Fall not Fallen Angels, um, Excalibur and and New Mutants. So uh, X Force number one blew me away and. 
Well, not to put too fine a point on it, but they also blew away uh, Xavier. Let's read the description here. Uh, the high price of a new Dawn, X-Force is the CIA of the mutant war world, one half intelligence branch and one half special ops. Beast, Jean Grey, and Sage on one side, Wolverine, Kid Omega, and Domino on the other. In a perfect world, there would not be, there would be no need for an X-Force. We're not there yet. So, like I said, someone attacked Krakoa and killed Xavier. Now, it's very interesting how they attacked Krakoa. It, it, I didn't pick it up until after I had actually posted my official review for it. In the beginning of the comic, they couldn't somewhere, uh, Domino was infiltrating a mutant hate group. They captured her, and then later on, they the people of Krakoa were like, where's Domino? We haven't heard from her. Should we start worrying about her? And then all of a sudden, we see this group of people parachuting into Krakoa, and something registers as Domino, and we can see these bands of white on the invaders, and they basically skinned Domino, stitched it, grafted it onto themselves, and then Krakoa recognized those invaders as Domino. It's creepy, it's gross, it's horrific, and then they kill Xavier. So, right out of the gate, boom, we are off and flying with X Force. It's probably. I, I can't make the decision. I can't make the call between uh, Fallen Angels and X-Force being my favorite of, of the new ones. So I am jazzed for this one. This one blew me out of the water just like uh, um, uh, Fallen Angels did. So I'm curious in this one to see how they bring Xavier back or if one of the other Dawn of X titles will take care of it and how the X-Men go get Retribution and track down who attacked them and save Domino. Great, great stuff. All right, next up, we've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Speaking of great stuff, let's read the description here. New, uh, I'm sorry, Necessary Evil Continues. The all-new Omega Rangers team up for the team up with the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the first time. But as they battle evil forces on the moon, it's Jason, now the red Omega Ranger who must face Lord Zed alone. No matter who wins, nothing will ever be the same for any Power Ranger. Yes. Yes, so much yes. You can see from the cover there, Omega Red, Power Ranger Jason, leader of that team, going mano a mano with Lord Zed. So, so awesome. I love this book so much. It's doing so much to expand and push past what we saw in, in Power Rangers just on the TV show, and it can push it to a deeper level, a more intricate level than, a, you know, frankly, a kid's show that's really two sto two shows stitched together, right, could, could ever even think to doing. So I love that they're taking the foundation of the platform and building a whole new house uh, on top of it, and Jason is really, um, Jason Lee Scott is really getting some super great character development in this. He's a great leader of the Omega Rangers, and seeing him go up against Lord Zed, mano mano, is just going to be absolutely Amazing. Last issue, we get um, the Omega Rangers and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers meeting, although the Omega Rangers are Jason, Trini, and Zack, so they couldn't tell the MMPRs who they were, so they had to leave. But we got a look at the Omega Ranger Zords. It was just awesome. If you're a Power Rangers fan, you you got to be reading this. It's absolutely incredible. All right, next up on my list is Batgirl 41. Let's read the description here. After a disastrous defeat at the hands of Oracle, Batgirl must find a way to pick up the pieces of her shattered life. But all the while, Babs must ask herself how she can defeat a nemesis who knows her every move before she makes it. So, uh, I have not loved this recent story arc in Batgirl. They changed the creative team away from Mary Kett Scott and Paul Pelletier to um, Cecil Castellucci, and the artist's name is escaping me at this point. My apologies. Um, and I haven't loved this one, and... Um, I don't know how much of it is. I, I need to get into a few more story arcs to make a final decision on it. But this one has some interesting points, right? So the way, um, like the description said, Oracle is the bad guy. And Oracle was programmed by Barbara. And she has all this information on her. She knows her thought patterns, how she's going to think. So now Barbara has to do something outside of the ordinary to trick Oracle and figure out how to win, right? And so I really love that. And so at the end of last issue... Batgirl purposefully loses. She runs away, right? A character um, uh, said, you know, Batgirl's never going to run away. And um, uh, Oracle said, yeah, I know because I know her every move. And so ba Barbara is like, okay, that's what I have to do. I have to do what I wouldn't normally do. So she basically lets herself fall 
off of a burning building. So how does she save herself? How does um, uh, Oracle compute this? At the end of the last issue, once Barbara jumped off, the Oracle was like saying, stalled, buffering, cannot compute, which I thought was really fun. It actually reminded me of... Super deep nerd cut here, right? If you've ever read Stephen King's The Dark Tower series in book three, The Wastelands, the main characters are on a train that is uh, basically an, um, an artificial intelligence, and it gives them riddles, and it forces them to ask riddles of him. It's a whole riddle thing. It's weird. It's coked out Stephen King, and it's amazing. You should definitely read it. So spoilers for that particular book. So they, uh, they, they figure out how to defeat the train, this sentient AI train that wants riddles from them. They give him stupid riddles, right? Like, what, like what, what, what sound does a duck make when you hold its bill together? banana and it makes no sense and it basically breaks the computer which i think is hilarious and <laughs> maybe maybe the writer of of batgirl cecil castellucci is is reading into that and remembers that plot point like i did and it'd be interesting to see how how far uh, they they take that all right next up here we got batman beyond 38 after all these years Derek powers long thought dead returns the lethal villain who now goes by the name blight is back to terrorize neo gotham while he hunts down bruce wayne with Terry McGinnis wanted by the police and on the run, the only person who can stop him is Batwoman. But how do you stop a walking nuclear reactor when you can barely when you barely know how to use your own high tech suit? So, two things, right? Blight is back, one of the coolest villains, the original OG villain from Batman Beyond. He's one of the first villain, you're the first villain that Terry fought, aside from just like random jokers and punks and stuff like that, right? so great to see him back and kind of have this full circle balance of like the first major villain that Batman Beyond fought was Plight. The first major villain that Batwoman is Beyond is going to fight is Plight. I love that kind of symmetry. So that's really cool. And then number two, the big question is, who is Batwoman Beyond? I think there are four possibilities. Two that the um, comic itself last issue presented to us, and those are Melanie Walker and Barbara Gordon. So I'm immediately going to knock Barbara Gordon out of contention in my theorization because I think it's too much because it's too, it's an easy answer. It's a, um, it's, it's an uninteresting answer. Let's go with that. She's been Batgirl. She's been a superhero. She's been a caped hero before. Um, the I know that the TV show made her a lot older than the comics now are portraying her. They've de-aged her a lot to more of a middle-aged woman. The the show was she was full gray hair. She was definitely in her later years, maybe like 60. I could see her physically being a Batwoman in this comic, but I don't think it's going to be her. Um, one, Melanie Walker is a favorite character of mine, so I hope she is going to be the to be a Batwoman beyond. Um, but the other two that um, the possibilities are are um, Adriana Grayson, who is Dick Grayson's daughter in this future timeline. I could see her seeing that Batman is no more, seeing what her father did as Nightwing, because she knows and she knows all about the Bat family. I could see her getting into the Batcave and taking up the mantle. The Dark Horse, though, that someone else called out in a comment in last week's review or last month's review was that it could be Dana Tan. Um, I think that's a possibility. Um... But I don't know if that's a strong possibility. She doesn't have the training or anything like that. And she's generally been very against all things Bat. So I think the two main contenders are Melanie Walker and Adriana Grayson. So we'll see who it is. The The hair coming out of the suit is uh, is a redhead. So obviously that kind of lends credence to, um, to Barbara Gordon. But by that same token, Batwoman in the normal timeline in the present day, she wears a wig in her suit. So, you know, it could be anyone. Alright, next up is Red Hood Outlaw. Let's read the description here. After their first mission in the field, all of the outlaw all the outlaws want to do is head to the block for some R and R. Unfortunately, no sooner do they get home than they find themselves under assault from Shea Veritas's clones. It's like nine of the living duplicates in there, and Red Hood is nowhere to be found. Is he teaching them a dangerous but hopefully valuable lesson with his absence, or is he dealing with something even bigger and more terrifying? So 
Last issue, we had some good stuff with Red Hood teaching his new clan of villains, and they fought this, uh, like, Doomsday Jr. monster, and they eventually figured out that they were attacking each other for no reason and um, pulled him into the group. Actually, there was another group of monsters that they ended up attacking. They pull him into the group. The last thing we see is them getting a message that the block, their headquarters, was under attack. This description makes it seem like uh, Sophia Veritas, one of the smartest women in the world, has cloned herself, and now they're attacking Weird stuff. Red Hood has gone off the deep end a little bit in this in this current run, right? But the most exciting thing was at the end of last issue, Artemis, Bizarro, and Pup Up, along with Ma Gun, are back in our reality. Um, I believe that it, they've led us to believe that, and you can see on the cover here, it looks like they're back. I hope they're back. I love those characters, and I and I, along with I think a lot of other people, wouldn't mind everyone returning to the status quo for these characters. So we'll see what comes of that this week in Red Hood at Law 40. All right, last up this week is Detective Comics 1016. Now, before we get into this one, um, I use a website called Comic List to uh, see what's coming out every week. Um, it listed Detective Comics 1016 as coming out this week, but then I flipped over to the DC Comics official website so I can pull the cover the cover images and they don't have this one listed this week so I don't know for sure if this one's coming out this week but we're going to talk about it anyway um debating her now estranged husband or defeating i'm sorry her now estranged husband mr freeze isn't enough to sate Nora freeze's bloodlust as she usurps his frozen throne establishing herself as the first ice queen of gotham the dark knight will have his hands full as nora unleashes an icy hell unlike any other on his city's street so um Mrs. Freeze has broken back. She's not only cured of whatever disease it was that she had, she is out there running amok. She is basically the new Mr. Freeze. She is out there being a full on villain she likes being a villain and it tears mr freeze up there was a great character moment between mr freeze and batman in last issue where he said i i've only ever been a villain to get what i need to heal my wife and now i have healed her and now she has become a villain batman will you help me defeat her and let me get her back and so now mr freeze and batman have teamed up to go take down mrs freeze and i love it this series is firing on all cinder cylinders six out of five stars i love it so much i hope another issue comes out this week because i cannot wait to read it all right guys that's everything on my poll list this week thank you guys so much for watching be sure to leave a comment down below of which comics you guys are getting uh this week and maybe what your thanksgiving uh plans are if you got anything comic related or going to meet up with family let me know all that down in the comments uh down as well again thank you guys so much for watching if this is your first time here at the channel please consider hitting that subscribe button for me it would mean a lot and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop